all right uh, what I want to do today is um, get started with the under method uh, for solving uh, to get the sec second solution uh, uh, this is useful if uh, the first solution is not in a closed form if it's in closed form you know how to use the Ronskian method but if it's not if it's in series form or something how to get the second solution okay uh, so the method is called derivative method um, and uh, I will also talk about series form of the derivative method solution okay so that's what I want to talk about today talk about Uh, so this is useful um, um, to solve, to obtain second solution. Of a second order. Differential equation. When um, you know, for the cases when the initial roots are identical, <coughs> right. okay, in that case, and also in the case when sigma 1 minus sigma 2 uh, is an integer uh, with sigma 1 greater than sigma 2. So, in these situations, uh, Definitely in this case, we can get only one solution in the Frobenius series, series method. In this case, you know, some occa occasionally you may get two independent solutions. Uh, for, uh, otherwise, you'll definitely get one uh, solution from sigma 1, which is a larger initial group. This we have gone through previously. Okay. So the, the premise of this uh, derivative method is as follows. Uh, uh, <coughs> We start the Fobenius series. We have been, you know, uh, we've been writing like this, right? Uh, okay. This is when P of Z and Q of Z is uh, uh, not, uh, you know, blows up, but Z times P of Z and Z squared times Q of Z exist. We have been able to. Uh, Right, at least one of the solutions we could get uh, from the Fobenius series. Okay, this is what you know, and uh, we have been writing our differential equation in this canonical form. So, two things uh, in the derivative method, what happens is the first step is. Uh, we are going to treat a n not as a constant but as a as a, a function of the initial root. We will write this as a function of the initial root. Okay, uh, it's, it's a variable parameter. Sigma is a parameter here. Okay, uh, it's a variable. Um, <coughs> And then we will write it like this. And a naught sigma, as usual, is not equal to 0. There also a naught is not equal to 0. Now, this differential equation, uh, I'm going to start writing in a certain form, uh, which we will use for term rule also. If you remember, I can write this as L operating on y of z equal to 0, where L is your linear operator and the differential operator is nothing but it's a different notation, okay, I mean, uh, and we'll start using that uh, for other things soon. All right. All right, what it is is, this is a differential equation. And I'm going to write this homogeneous differential equation, this concise notation, where L here is nothing but this differential operator. It's also a linear operator. Okay. So L is um, L represents all these things. Okay. L is also linear. 
on breaker because it's also a different slot. It's a different slot breaker because it, it is a different show. So what I'm going to look at is the following, the derivative asymmetric. As I said, we are going to treat a n as a function of sigma. This is the first thing. And we have to guess, you know, it somehow come up with the functional dependence of a, a, a n with respect to sigma. Somehow we have to come up, we have to find that. What is this functional dependence of This is what we have to find. Uh, when we set up the recursion relationship, I will not substitute the indicial roots, but I will instead try to find out what is, how is a related to this parameter sigma. Okay, so that this is the key, and once I know that, I can get the solutions very easily. Okay, uh, it's some derivative of this coefficient a n will be your second solution. Okay, uh, evaluated at the indicial roots. Okay, so. So that is sort of a general you know, idea of this uh, method. So this is the first step. This is your Frobenius series. But here now, you know, instead of this as a constant, we are going to consider this as a parameter, function of some parameter sigma. All right. Now, <coughs> so if this was your second order differential equation, I could write my differential equation in this concise notation. Okay, we'll go to matrix notation eventually be from here. Okay, me now. Now the analogous thing here, I want to look at if L the same operator, L is the operator corresponding to your differential equation. If it is a, a Legend differential equation, this would be what? Uh, uh, this is minus two x d square over d, d z square minus two z over one minus z square, and this will be L times L plus 1 over 1 minus Z squared. So that is your L operator, okay? So let's, you know, try, if this is the thing, L operating on the same differential operator or corresponding to your differential equation can be written as follows. <coughs> Sigma 1, if sigma 1 and sigma 2 are roots of this um, differential equation, of the initial roots of the differential equation, you can see that L operating on this will be 0. That, that's one of the ways of thinking why this uh, function form has been chosen for L operating on y as a function of Now, how you get this? Hmm? Sigma minus that you've assumed because I, um, this is what I'm going to tell you. Okay, I'm not assuming there's a rationale for it. Okay, couple of things. Okay, uh, I want this as a function of sigma. Okay, I'm also giving you this dependence, right? Now, if you remember, what did we? If I have this, right? What did, if you do y double prime, y prime? You substitute that you have a series uh, in powers z to power sigma n, n plus sigma whatever it is here n plus sigma minus one blah 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 but i can always factorize z to power sigma term right we have seen that yeah. we have seen that also and does this remind you of something okay i mean i, I want you to this term and this is n means like uh, uh, this part you understand. I mean, the z yeah. power sigma is very easy to understand, right? Because uh, that's always there, right? I mean, yeah. when I substitute this, 
even without considering this as parameter, you'll always uh, have a, you know, I mean, all I'm doing is substituting yeah. y, y prime here and y double prime, you have some powers of z, right, n plus sigma uh, minus 2 or whatever it is, you, you get all these things, but there's always z to power sigma term. And that correspond that you also see something here, what have I have written? The zeroth order term, right? Yeah. And what does this remind you of? I'm going to ask you. How did we get our initial root equation? Would that that plug into a, a the lowest term, term, right? Lowest term. Yeah. So, so in some sense, this is this is nothing but sort of the initial root, the first term, and the rest of the terms. If sigma equal to because I'm not told sigma equal to sigma one. If it if right now I'm keeping as variable, and um, the rest of the terms become zero because they are the ones which lead to the recursion relationship. Okay, the the lowest term we factorize out like this as an initial, and other terms which connect a n minus one to a n or whatever it is a n minus two, they all lead to they all become zero. The coefficients of those terms will become zero because that, those are the ones which lead to the a recursion relationship. So that way you rationalize this is you understand what is this term going to be like L operating on Y Z sigma should be something of this nature. Okay, let me put this, this is also part of that. <coughs> the functional dependence is sort of okay, this part you understand uh, because that is always there. And these are all coming from sort of the lowest order term. So, so you can sort of understand. Okay, L of if sigma equal to sigma one, uh, you know, it is a root. I mean, that will become this basically. Those, are, you know, so you can understand how this is being cooked up. Okay, I mean, sort of satisfies a homogeneous equation and functional dependence. You are sort of guessing, but it has a good basis for that guess of how this it should be. Okay. Now, now from here I have to go and find out how I'm going to get uh, the solutions when the initial roots are identical. I need to construct the second solution. First solution will come from Frobenius series. So th the way um, this is cooked up uh, is as follows. Uh, you look at, uh, okay, you just take partial of this quantity and try to look at this quantity for sigma equal to uh, sigma 2 or sigma equal to sigma 1 because the identical root doesn't matter. So what happens if I operate, uh, if, if I differentiate this, uh, take the partial of this with respect to sigma, that's my left hand side, what about the right hand side? <coughs> and I can take nr sigma equal to 1 also, okay, I mean that's also possible. So just let's focus on the other quantities at this point. <coughs> All it says it should not be zero, I can take that as one. Uh, so what do, what do we have? Minus sigma one minus means we have to apply product. Sigma one, so I'm considering this case, sigma one equal to sigma two. Yeah. So I have six, I have something like this. Okay, let me write down here. I can put it later on. That equal to one. Um, Z to the power of sigma. Okay, that's the first step. And I have to take the derivative of this. Supposing it took uh, this as one, then I have to take the derivative of this. And <coughs> what is the derivative of this? Sigma sigma minus one minus sigma. What's the second term? That's the main thing I want to understand. Yeah, taking the differentiate, we are differentiating with respect to exponent. Yeah. 
So it's e to the power x. What is that? E to the power x. Where, where is e? No, no, it's e. It's, 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 it's e to sigma minus 1. Sigma sigma minus 1. C e to the power of sigma minus 1. No, it's not because the derivative. If you're not no, no, it's not a constant. It is it's ax log. A. It is not a d, it's not z to power of n, right? Oh, your different shape. You are yeah. see that. That's why I want, was asking. No, you know how to uh, do oh, this, yeah. okay? Yeah. Can, can you use something yeah, else exactly. other than sigma one because we use it prior for our initial roots where we found. So what did you say? No, I, I I need to get the derivative of this quantity now. I've taken the derivative of this, okay? I need to now take the derivative of z to power sigma with respect to sigma. And the quantity that I'm differentiating is in the exponent. Yeah. So this we know is n, n z to power n minus 1. So you have to set z, z to power sigma to be some variable and take log of both sides and then it's take AX, the derivative with respect to AX sigma. AX log a means that sigma log Same, a. same yeah. quantity times? Log a, log z. That's your log of z, yeah. yeah. That's okay, so so that's uh, that's an important yeah. thing that you have to know uh, because it is, you know, what we are differentiating is uh, in the exponent, and if you have forgotten, all you have to remember is uh, you have to set z to power sigma equal to some variable t, let us say, uh, take log natural log of both sides. Okay, so and then you take derivative with respect to sigma. Take now take. Uh, the, the derivative. Okay, so, so that will be uh, what is this? Natural log of z. Uh, so this will be what? 1 over t uh, dt over this thing and 1 over t is uh, z to the power sigma dt over uh, d sigma happen uh, d t or d sigma is what dt or d sigma dt or d sigma is um, uh, is this right i mean so basically d sigma over this quantity is dt over d sigma okay so this is nothing but uh, i get t is is equal to sigma. Person. Yeah. So I get that. Okay. And that's what we are trying to calculate in some sense, right? Jimmy, sort of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now it's good. Sigma, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, you know, so all you have to do is this quantity, take the log, natural log on both sides, and then take the derivative with respect to sigma. Then you have uh, this quantity is nothing but. So that's sort of the, the, you can prove that. Uh, so whenever you have the quantity that you are trying to differentiate with is in the exponent, you have this quantity, you know, it comes back and then you have natural log of z. Okay, so that's the, that's how you have to calculate this. So there's a trick for calculating such things. Uh, all right. <coughs> So this is nothing but this is in this kind of thing it will keep coming so it, you better you know, learn this or uh, you know, differential of that is that. Now <coughs> L is what is the independent in, in independent variable in L? L is a partial with respect to what? Mm -hmm. Or derivatives are with respect to what? Z. Z, right? So this is what d square y or d z yeah. square blah blah blah. blah. Okay. But it's also a linear operator, so I can reverse the order of differentiation. So I can write this expression as L operating on partial with respect to sigma, y is in sigma is equal to that. Okay. Now, when you evaluate this expression for uh, sigma uh, equal to sigma 1, okay, sigma 1 equal to sigma 2, so it doesn't matter where you evaluate, then this both terms will become zero. And so what I get is L operating on this quantity for 
for evaluate it for sigma equal to sigma 1 equal to 0. All right. So what does it say about this then? That's your solution of the uh, of the differential equation. L operating on y uh, is equal to 0. That's homogeneous uh, differential equation you're trying to solve, right? So L operating on something, if it becomes 0, then this quantity, that is, it looks like Frobenius series, except I put all these things as a uh, as a function, but I'm, uh, you know, pain as a function of sigma. So you have to calculate the derivative of that. That's easy to do because we know how to calculate the derivative of zeta plus sigma, which I've given. And if I somehow find the functional dependence of a and sigma in a very simple way, I know how to calculate the second solution. So it's a it's a trick to get a second independent solution. Okay, mean uh, So so what it is is simply this. <coughs> Alright, so let me say uh, for the derivative method, if sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2, the second solution is simply y2, z is nothing but L uh, is simply, sorry, uh, partial with respect to uh, sigma of y z sigma uh, evaluated for sigma equal to sigma 1 where y z sigma is given by, given by that formula. So, so my whole task reduces to finding, write the recursion relationship, don't substitute for the roots and somehow find the functional form of a and sigma because this I know how to yeah. differentiate. Okay, so, so that is the it's we didn't have to find roots here. Yeah, if roots you have to do it only to, uh, we still have to do it because we have to put sigma equal to sigma 1. Means in this we, a whole case we can take for in the case of identical roots. Right, but still you have to know what the value of sigma 1. Okay, so in that you have to find the initial roots but do not substitute it in the recursion relationship. Yeah, yeah. We need that because Functional. the solution will be what? The first solution will be z to power of sigma 1 right I mean yeah. if this is the case uh, and then you know still there'll be there'll be zeta yet after taking the derivative you have to put six sigma equal to sigma one I, I'm going to tell you something else so this eventually leads to a very you will all the time use this in scattering theory when you do the scattering theory you'll always see the second solution is first solution times natural log of z plus under series okay and so uh, any differential equation, second order differential equation will have that form. The second solution, first solution time natural log of z plus under series bn times z to power n, where the, where the coefficient bn, you have to evaluate what it is, yeah. This whole case we evaluated for the when roots are equal. No, we, I'm going to do the other one also. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, th this is the solution for the, the, for the uh, identical roots. Okay. okay, I'm going to do when, uh, you know, the roots differ by an integer. Okay. So then it's not a problem when it's either difference is integer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have a very general solution and it's very, you know, you will see that again and again in quantum mechanics they use because you'll have second order solution you'll have one like that and then you'll say okay natural log of z blows up at, uh, at, at origin you, you ignore that and it's only the other series uh, which will have you know the coefficients have to be evaluated in this derivative this this will eventually become derivative of a and with respect to sigma or something like I, i'm going to prove that to you okay so you even have a simpler solution and you always know how to write the solution of a second order differential equation. That's that is why I'm trying to teach this um, method. And to get the first solution, we have to do the usual for Venus. Yeah, for Venus. Yeah, yeah. First solution we have to because yeah, it is the case when we cannot use the Ronskin method. Supposing uh, you you know if it's not a closed form, you still have to find the second solution, right? I mean, so this is the way to do it. All right, so. So if, so if you understand this, I'm going to write the other one and then um, uh, I'll also, so second solution then, uh, so I'm going to call this as case one, right? We'll do a problem so it becomes clearer, okay. Uh, sigma one 
minus sigma 2 is an integer and sigma 2 is less than sigma 1. Okay, so, uh, so we know in such cases for the larger root you can get a solution from the Frobenius series. In this case the solution is given, the second solution comes from the following. There you have to take partial of uh, partial with respect to sigma of sigma minus sigma 2 uh, y written in this form okay. and you evaluate this for sigma equal to sigma 2. <coughs> Case 1 is identical rules. So I, I'll quickly, you know, mention this: how to how how the derivation of how the proof of this came from. Uh, okay. Uh, again. Uh, yeah. How do you arrive at that? Text? I'm going to prove that. Yeah. I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so why this is what we said, right? I mean, yeah. we said this should be of this form. So I'm going to look at this quantity, um, sigma minus sigma 2, uh, y, Okay, uh, all right, I'm going to take a uh, partial of uh, this quantity. Uh, okay, again, let's uh, look at, uh, and I will take a naught, this one I will put it as one, okay, I mean a naught six sigma. So here, uh, again, we'll have uh, different terms with respect to sigma. Uh, the first term maybe is sigma minus sigma 2 square, uh, z of sigma, OK, plus, uh, so I took the derivative with respect to that, let us say, and we term like this. And then there'll be a term like uh, sigma minus sigma 1. Uh, sigma minus sigma 2 square, uh, then this, when you take the of sigma, natural log of sigma. So when I take the derivative of the last term, I will have this. So again, um, for sigma equal to sigma 2, uh, this term Operating on it's not y, l operating on that is this. Uh, this is my solution, and this is l operating on should have this form. Uh, so I have l here. So the same argument uh, because uh, these are linear operator, I can reverse the order. Um, so we have L operating on this quantity, sigma minus sigma 2, y, z, sigma. Uh, uh, this is equal to 0 when you, when you evaluate for sigma equal to sigma 2, the right hand side becomes 0. Okay. Because this is what we have. Uh, and so this is 
equal zero. So we say, okay, if L operating something is zero, then this quantity within the parenthesis must be my solution. So that's how we come up with the second one. Second independent solution you guess this way. Okay. Okay, so, so that is your second independent solution. <coughs> Is this clear? Mm. All right, so th the, the, the only critical thing is this expression, which is like for Venus series, yeah. that and L operating on Y, you have to remember it's this, okay, then the rest of them follows. So these are the two steps, key steps, and we have to find the functional form of um, A and sigma, which we'll do it within an example, that will become clearer. Now, uh, so I was talking about the other stuff, which is, uh, I have it. It's going to do the series form. Uh, All right. So, corresponding to this first case, uh, the identical loops case, I'll prove this to you also in a minute. Uh, the series solution, series form of the solution is written like this, and I'm going to prove that in a minute is as I said first solution times natural log of z plus solution is also given in a similar form. So in a way, except that how the coefficient Vn is calculated is different. That's sigma 2. So on the infinite series, okay, n going from here 0 to infinity. Uh, I'll tell you why you know, here it starts from 1 in a minute. Uh, Here it starts with n zero to infinity, and then the coefficient b n here, in this case, is nothing but the derivative of a n with respect to sigma evaluated at sigma equal to sigma one. The coefficient here then is given as take the derivative of similar to sigma minus sigma 2 times uh, a n sigma and you evaluate this so this this coefficient is nothing but uh, a n sigma sigma minus sigma 2 and you evaluate this for sigma equal to sigma the 2. Second solution yeah, will start from n equal to 0. Yeah. I will I will talk about that. The first one because it will be a n remember the, the coefficient you have to take the derivative yeah. a n a, a n is a 0 sig it is uh, 1 a constant so it will become zero derivative of a constant with respect to so that's why it starts from n equal to one 
in this case you have sigma minus sigma 2 type a so it doesn't you know if it's one okay. you still okay so it's not so that's the reason you will see this always then in this case why in this in a scattering solution most of the time you say oh in one case you start in even if you put it it is zero it doesn't matter yeah, but that's how they explicitly put it because uh, a, a zero sigma they take it as a constant and so eliminate that so th so it is very easy to find the second solution except the coefficient is different so you know it's always first solution times that na natural log of z okay and the second solution um, is also on the infinite series x uh, you know where the coefficient is evaluated like this and of course sigma 1 equals sigma 2 so it is z plus sigma 1 here and here um, you know it's calculated in a different way the coefficient here is calculated in a different way so you always know how to do it in a very you know at least you you always know what the general form is and uh, in most of the cases when you do the real problem realistic problem this solution you will eliminate z equal to zero because natural log of zero is infinity you'll say you know you can always have a co coefficient also c1 c2 you will take the coefficient as um, zero and you say this is unrealistic solution and keep only the other one basically those are the you know in real physical solution problems those are the only two terms which will contribute okay so the sets are much much simpler and this method if we uh, means uh, usually if, if uh, sigma minus one sigma minus sigma one is not equal to integer. We both uh, we can get both the solution from for a linear series, but N not always. If, if, if only if, if it's not an integer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, not yeah, it, yeah. But yeah. Uh, in that case, uh, can we apply the, that method? Uh, it's, it's uh, uh, means uh, suppose uh, we didn't want to. Uh, means usually it, that will be easy, but. I think we should be able to get yeah. it. Yeah, I don't think there's any restriction about uh, sigma one uh, min sigma one minus sigma two to be an integer. I think okay. it's a very general yeah. solution. That second case is a very general solution. You should yeah. be always be able to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is regardless. Th I, this is very general. Second, you know. No, we can try on one more. Yeah, one I am side. pretty sure. Yeah, I am pretty sure of that. I mean, uh, because the way we have derived it, there's yeah. nothing that yeah, is nothing, telling yeah. me. Oh, this is not applicable for such a case. Okay, so it, it is a very general solution. In because some sense, uh, this is. Uh, it doesn't matter whether its difference is not integer or not. Okay, in this point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but in, only in that case, I need to find a way to find a second solution. Um, yeah, but regardless, you still have to find the first solution by that method, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes, I, I think they will give the same thing, except uh, you know, if it's in functional form, you have to see how this. You know, correlates to that result, right? I mean, I will show you the same problem that we did by Ronsky and method. I'm going to do it um, uh, uh, by this method. Okay, so, all right. Let us. Um, uh, okay, where do I get this from? Okay, let us go back here. Where, okay. All right. <coughs> I'll show for the first case, uh, which is simple. Uh, so. If this is the form, then um, I have to calculate this, right? I mean, so what is uh, y two z? Is I have to take the partial with respect to this, right? Partial with respect to sigma of this quantity. I'm going to write it like this for a minute, so that uh, because I have to. Okay, z to power n plus sigma, right? Okay, uh, <coughs> so what is that? I mean, um, uh, so let us do this first, okay? I mean, because I have y1 log z, so I want to tell you where that comes from. Uh, so this has to be evaluated for sigma equal to sigma 1. That's what this formula says, right? Sigma equal to so sigma 1. So what is the, supposing I take uh, uh, that first, and I'm differentiating with respect to sigma. Uh, what is that quantity? Uh, is z to power sigma natural log of z, right? And I have z to power n because I don't have to do anything about it. Yeah. Uh, so, so I do it's have. Become y one n. So z to power n plus sigma I have, right? And I'm not doing anything with respect to the first term. Yeah. So this is my first term. 
at this point, okay? And then the second term in a differentiate, I'm differentiating, uh, I have a n, uh, so sorry, I have what, uh, z to the power of n plus sigma, okay, that is the term I'm not differentiating with, but d n d sigma, Uh, so I have to do this and right now I'm going to 0 to infinity for a minute, uh, sigma equal to sigma 1, okay. Uh, so, so, let's make it clear, this is sigma 1. So uh, this whole quantity has to be calculated like this, right. So what is this quantity now? Uh, because this we are evaluating also for sigma equal to sigma 1, right. So that is nothing but if for the, if you evaluate this equation, uh, you know, for sigma equal to sigma 1, this is nothing but y1 natural log of z, right? So that's that's where that term is coming from. Why it's been written like that is y1 is nothing but uh, <coughs> sigma evaluated at uh, uh, put z, z. Yeah. Okay, uh, z to the power of n plus sigma 1, let me put it at you know, sigma 1 at this point, okay, I mean, uh, so that is nothing but, if you evaluate this for sigma equal to sigma 1, that is your, that is your y1, and I have a natural log of z coming from, because I differentiated z to power sigma with respect sigma, so that's where the natural log of z is coming, it's really coming from this, diff, you know, derivative of this quantity, something of this nature, so this is a very important thing, you know, what do I, yeah. This is this the dif differential you have to remember, okay? So that's where that is coming from, okay? All right, if you understand that, now what is the second one? Uh, sigma equal to sigma 1. So I can pull this out, right? And I'm calling this coefficient as bn, z to pop n. So this is what, uh, yes, sir. So, so bn is really nothing but differential of that. It's coming just by taking the derivative of this, I'm applying this formula and just taking the derivative of that. That's all it is. Is this clear? So here uh, you take the derivative with respect, and uh, this is the coefficient I'm calling this bn. This derivative take evaluated at sigma equal to sigma one. I'm calling it as uh, this thing, and z to power n and z to power sigma. I separate it out, right? For so I've written like this, and I have written okay because I've already evaluated that as sigma equal to sigma 1, and only this coefficient, this term, this derivative has to be evaluated. So if I know that, I can calculate it, all right? So similarly, you can calculate the other one. All you have to do is all this and then try to do it, okay? So that's where the formula is coming from. So, so how so can you have that, uh, that one n plus of 1 to infinity? Which one? Oh, uh, why? Because uh, they are d, okay. We have B n is equal to this, right? This is the formula. We have to evaluate this for sigma equal to sigma 1. But A 0 sigma is 1, right? So so that term, it goes n equal to 0. This is, uh, it doesn't contribute because that's a constant. So that's why it's n equal to 1, okay? In the other case, you know, that you don't have the problem. You can put zero, but it will become zero anyway. But uh, but most books will write it like this, and you may wonder why in one yes. case it's one, one other case zero. This is because we are taking the derivative of uh, uh, the n equal to zero term is that. So so b n a uh, b zero basically is zero. So b z b zero is zero. Basically. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Professor, I have a doubt. Uh, this a zero sigma equal to one. Mm. Uh, and this okay. thing we proved it. Mm? it means uh, a zero sigma equal to one. This thing we already proved it. Or? No, that we know. We have not proved it because it's it's always like a constant times. Th that's the only term we take it as uh, one. Okay, I mean. Uh, means we assumed it. Yeah. Because it's a con it's mu it, it's multiplies constant yeah. time solution. So it can be uh, any other number, but it doesn't affect because depends on sigma. It depends on sigma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
other terms are yeah exactly that's the only term which doesn't depend on sigma a1 a1 will depend on sigma okay yeah. a0 sigma we take it as one but other ans will depend on sigma Let's do this problem that we had done previously. Um, let me see. Yeah. We had done this uh, using the on skin method. So that way we can check these things, what we have done is uh, really, me this method also works. <coughs> So you, by now you know how to calculate the initial roots. What are the initial roots of this equation, differential equation? Can you quickly say what is P of Z, Q of Z, and apply the initial root? P of Z is what? 3 Z. And Q of Z is 1 over Z minus, Z minus 1. Uh, so at Z equal to 0, uh, this is fine. Uh, this is negative 3, right? Uh, but this is infinity. So even one of them blows up, we have to use Frobenius method, right? I mean, so we have to look at z times p of z at z equal to 0. And we have to see z squared at q of z at z equal to 0. <coughs> so, uh, so this is 0. And uh, z squared times q of z is also 0. Okay. And I think we call this as s of 0, and this we call as p of 0. So I'm just using shortcut to get the initial roots. So what we have is sigma times sigma 1 plus s of 0, sigma plus p of 0 equal to 0. Right? And so this will give me what? These, are, these two terms are 0. So we have sigma 1 equal to 1, sigma 2 equal to 0. Right. So, so it falls in this category two. Right. This is the case where it belongs to. Uh, <coughs> All right. Uh, so, I, the whole trick here in this problem is setting up this uh, recursion relation properly. So I can uh, somehow I have to find what is a n as a function of sigma for our differential equation. Okay. Uh, so the initially the process is the same, and then uh, we will somehow the recursion relationship. From there, I have to get the get the functional form. If I get the function form, I have to then apply this and you know solve it. All right. Uh, so let's quickly go through this, uh, which you know how to do. Uh, So let's substitute all these things. Um, so only 
everything you need to keep. Uh, okay, so if I substitute all that, um, this differential equation will become uh, z times z minus 1, y double prime. I can write it like um, as follows. Uh, let's see, n sigma, uh, n plus sigma, n plus sigma minus 1. Uh, is it for n plus sigma minus 2, right? I've done that. So that's uh, going from 0 to infinity. Uh, plus uh, 3z uh, times y prime, which is a n sigma. Uh, uh, y prime is n z of n plus sigma minus 1 and going from 0 to infinity, okay. uh, plus 3z yes, plus y, uh, which is a n sigma z of n plus sigma n going from 0 to infinity equal to 0. All I've done is substitute for y, y prime, and y double prime, except now these are all a n is a function of sigma. Uh, that's a bit. The initial root is kept as a function. Uh, it is we don't substitute like that, we just keep it uh, until the last step when we have to substitute. That's that's when we'll do it. All right. So the same procedure we'll compare. Uh, you know, same power of sig z to the power of sig n plus sigma or n plus sigma y minus one, and then we will do it. Uh, so first term is what z z square. Uh, so we have the first term is a n. Uh, sigma n plus sigma n plus sigma minus 1 uh, z squared will give me z to the power of n plus sigma okay so I'm just getting this term at this point and then I have another term here um, negative um, a n sigma n plus sigma uh, n plus sigma minus 1 uh, z to the power of n plus sigma minus 1, right? Like in this case, that will be my second term. A third term will be 3 times summation of n. Uh, I'm taking z inside, so I'll have a n sigma uh, n plus sigma z to the power of n plus sigma. Okay, and the last term is that. three times a n. Okay, I've taken that inside, I found equal to zero. All right, uh, so let us try to maybe uh, take uh, that as z to the power n or z to the power n plus sigma, doesn't matter. Uh, so compare the coefficient of So that means I have to make n go to n plus 1 in the second one, right? So here n will become n plus 1, others I don't have to touch, right? So I will get uh, a n sigma uh, n plus sigma n plus sigma minus 1 is that term and this one will have plus 3 uh, a n sigma I already taken out, 3 times n plus sigma uh, and plus 1 I think, okay. That should be equal to what? Uh, this is negative and I take the other side uh, and n becomes n plus 1, it becomes a n plus 1 sigma uh, and of course other one will become n becomes n plus 1 uh, plus sigma and uh, that one will be n plus sigma. Okay. <coughs> All right. So uh, this is nothing but n plus sigma square minus one. So a n sigma uh, 
this is n plus sigma squared plus 2 times n plus sigma plus 1 is a n plus 1 sigma n plus sigma n plus sigma plus 1. All right. So that is nothing but n plus sigma plus 1 whole square. So I can write a n uh, sigma uh, <coughs> is nothing but uh, uh, a n plus 1. Maybe I can write it like this. <laughs> okay, I, I want to get this coefficient a n plus 1 sigma over a n sigma. Uh, if that is the case, I want to keep my n plus sigma plus 1 in the numerator, and then I have in the denominator n plus sigma. So that is the recursion relationship I get keeping sigma as a variable at this point. From here, I somehow have to guess this functional form. Okay, so how to do that is what we have to understand. All right. Um, so n equal to uh, 0, we have a1 sigma over a0 sigma is n equal to 0 is sigma plus 1 over sigma. Okay. So previously, we would have put here the value of sigma as sigma 1, whatever for which you are trying to do. We are not going to do that. Uh, the next one is n equal to 1. Right? n equal to 1, I have um, a2 sigma over a1 sigma uh, is sigma plus 2 uh, over sigma plus 1. Right? So what is a2 sigma over a0 sigma is sigma plus 2 over sigma, right? I mean, I just multiply that. So from here, can you guess what is a n sigma over a0 sigma? Sigma n plus 1. Sigma plus n, n yeah, over sigma, sigma, right? It's a very simple. And I can take a0 sigma as 1, so I have a very simple uh, form for uh, uh, a n sigma, it is a very function, you know, so if I take a0 sigma equal to 1, I have a n sigma is nothing but uh, sigma plus n over sigma. So, so if you use a series method, all you have to do is take the derivative of this with respect to sigma for sigma equal to uh, zero. Uh, sigma equal to sigma two equal to zero. Okay. So, so, so this is the, the main thing is this may be complicated guess for different differential equations, uh, but that's what you have to guess. Okay. Don't substitute the value of sigma at the the root at this point. Only when you're getting the last step, when you're getting the solution, we have to substitute sigma value equal to sigma one or sigma two as the case may be. All right. So let us go further and see what's happening. I'm going to do this first with derivative method so that uh, all right uh, all right so so based on that formula my second solution should be given as partial with respect to sigma. <coughs> we are solving this for the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to integer. And uh, in the series solution, we didn't assume a0 sigma to be equal to 1. What? We did. That's why uh, uh, we did. That's why we, we got the, that's why the series is starting from n equal to 1 because differential of 1 with respect to sigma is 0. That's why. No, uh, th but this is the second case where uh, n starts from zero. Yeah, but because there it doesn't matter because you have sigma minus sigma two time a and sigma is there. Mm -hmm. So even if if you take a zero to be one, that quant that term survives. It is not zero because you have differential of sigma with respect to sigma minus two. Okay, that term okay. is not zero. Okay. Yeah, that's why that's that series starts from but n equal to zero. Here it doesn't matter. It's just a mm -hmm. to sigma. Yeah. 
The other one, yeah. In any case, you can actually evaluate. You don't have to put n equal to. Okay. But you will see in books, like written that way, and you have to wonder. You may be wondering why in one case you put n equal to zero and n equal to one. Okay, I mean, if you have a problem like this, you are explicitly solving, so you know it will cancel out. You know whatever it is. Okay, so what we have to do is this, right? Uh, partial with respect to sigma of sigma 2 is 0. Uh, let me just see. Uh, okay, uh, why? Okay, I, can, I have to calculate this, right? I mean, sigma minus sigma 2. Let me write down first. A sigma is okay. Um, uh, let me write down this and then we'll substitute. Okay, uh, z of n plus sigma. I have a n sigma uh, n going from zero to infinity. This is the formula, right? I mean, all I've done is substitute for y z sigma, which should be there, right? And this, and this has to be evaluated for sigma equal to sigma two equal to zero. Okay, sigma is a variable, sigma 2 is a fixed value which is 0. Alright, now this is what we have calculated, we know what this function form is now, right? Which is, uh, n, n for that I can put n plus sigma over sigma, right? So this quantity is, um, so this is n plus sigma over sigma. Sigma 2 is 0, so I can I can substitute as 0. Okay. So they will cancel. So because sigma 2 is 0, this sigma, sigma and this sigma will cancel. So I can all have to take is partial with respect to sigma of uh, this quantity, n plus sigma, uh, z to the power of n, uh, z to the power of sigma. Okay. Uh, I have to calculate this for sigma equal to sigma 2 equal to 0. Okay. Uh, okay, so now, you know, again, back again, we have the same z for sigma and all, we have to do it properly. Uh, so we have what? Two terms, right, basically. Uh, so let me just. So I have, uh, I have to take the derivative, but uh, let's see. I have z for n plus sigma. Uh, I have one term like this. And I have, I don't want to miss what to do. Uh, z to the power of n plus sigma. Like this. And then I have to evaluate all these things for sigma to the sigma to the to sigma. All right. <coughs> so what is the first term? What is that term? We have to take the derivative yeah. only with respect to that yes, term, yes. right? So all I have is the first term will be n, z to the power of n. I, I can now take the full derivative, right? There's only one term here. Uh, okay, this has to be, whatever it is, you have to calculate for sigma equal to sigma 2 equal to 0, right? And what is this term? Log z. So that is z to the sigma log, log z. z, right? So let us, uh, uh, okay, uh, so so this is nothing but z to the power sigma log z, that's a log of z, uh, and for sigma equal to sigma 2 equal to 0, this will drop off, right? All you have is then n, z to the power n, that's a log of z, okay? So that's what the first term will become, okay? Here I'm just writing down what this derivative is, but I just have to substitute that, okay? Then what's the second term? Uh, we have uh, take the derivative with respect to this. Let us say. Let's say. So we have another term which is n z to the n plus sigma uh, n going from zero to infinity. Uh, then I have to put sigma equal to sigma two equal to zero. I've already taken the derivative with respect to this. Uh, right. I mean, uh, why, why am I away? Okay, uh, all right. Then uh, there are two terms there, right? I mean, in some sense, I have this yeah. z pop n, z pop sigma, right? I mean, so I took the derivative with that respect to that. Then the next term will be sigma uh, z pop n 
Again, the same thing, z to the power sigma, natural log of z, n going from 0 to infinity. And this has to be valid for sigma equal to sigma 2 equal to 0. Because it is uh, sigma is 0, this will become 0 because of this term. Why there is an? Huh? There? And, and. There, here? Yeah. Let me just see what, what was that term. Uh, uh, where are we? I'm calculating this was that term. And then, oh, there's no n. Yeah. Yeah, there's no n. It is simply z to the power. Yeah, that, that's all it is. Yeah, I'm calculating. Yeah, this is the term I'm trying to calculate. Right? Yeah. So this term becomes 0. And this term then becomes what? Summation n going from 0 to n, z to the power of n. Because I have to substitute sigma equal to sigma 2 equal to 0. So my solution is then nothing but, the second solution is nothing but, uh, Again, put subsequent to 0. So this is nothing but n to power of z to power of n. And uh, natural log of z for n going from 0 to infinity. And so this again will become 1, right? So plus z to power of n. Uh, n going from 0 to infinity. So this is your second solution. All right. Take the derivative and then do this in the last step, okay? Otherwise, uh, you will. Uh, so, all I've done is just substitute sigma equal to sigma 2 equal to 0 after I took the derivative, and uh, this term does not contribute. So, here there are two terms, one coming from two derivatives. You know, take the derivative of just there are two terms here, one coming from here, one coming from there. And here there's only one term which is coming from here, right? I mean, now. Uh, all right, so now you have to compare that this term is equal to whatever you got through the round skin method, okay? So this is only giving me series kind of a solution because that is a starting point, right? And you, uh, series we want to write as function, what is this? Mm. 1 plus z plus z square, blah, blah, blah. What is that? It's log one plus binomial. Binomial theorem, use no, no, that. <coughs> and this, oh, sorry, where my log z I forgot. So yeah. there's a log z here, sorry. So probably this is your first solution, right? Y one log z, right? I mean that must be uh, the first solution. But what is this term and what is this term? Uh, so let's write down this term. Uh, n equal to zero, it does not contribute, right? N equal to one, we'll have uh, z log z, right? N equal to one is uh, that is n equal to one. N equal to two is z square, natural log z, and so on and so forth, okay? So let's see what that becomes, n going from 0 to infinity. And and this one, do you remember this, what is this function? This is what this is. What is the function form of this? Can I write it as 1 over 1 minus z? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's binomial expansion, okay? Alright. It's minus one power. Alright. Now what about this guy? Can I write it in functional form? Uh, z is common everywhere. Oh sorry, this is <laughs> I took the summation, so it's informal. Uh, so z can be taken out, right? Uh, 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 log z z log z we can take out, it looks like. Yes. This is 1 minus z square. I, 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 two, I saw 2, 2, I forgot. Uh, yeah. n equal to 2, 
uh, <laughs> two z square, right? n equal to three three z g. Okay. So we have one over two. This is three z three z square. Yeah. Okay. So this is nothing but z natural log of z uh, divided by uh, one minus z square z whole square plus one over one minus. Okay, basically my first solution was then z over one minus z whole square right, in the functional form. If you had it, uh, I'll write down like this one minus one minus z square natural log of z uh, plus one minus z. So I'm pretty sure if you did by Fobina series, this is your first solution. Uh, and that. Okay, so and this we had proved from R Ransky method you had uh, calculated this. This was one of the problems that we did in the so class. So we did check for the. Yeah, this solution we did, right? So, uh, so many cases you may have to do it, and um, as I said, you you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can also use the series solution method there. In order to get this term, all you have to take is you know the function form. All you have to take is a derivative of a n sigma with respect to sigma. Right. Uh, the coefficient for sigma equal to zero. So, so that should lead to that particular n plus sigma over whatever it's n or sigma. You know, just calculate because that's a very simple derivative you have to calculate. Okay, so you can check with that also. All right. All right. So, um, so that way. Yeah, it's the same solution. It's the same solution, right? So it's a completely different way of doing it, but uh, you know. Th this is a case where we had we wanted to check where we had a you know solution Maybe through the rest. We get the one upon z. Hmm? No. One upon? It's one minus z. One over z, you had? We had it right. Uh, no, it's two. It's, it's yeah, it's Alright, so uh so okay, so to recap, uh, all we have done is keep this in a functional form, the coefficient. Okay, that's the main thing. And a zero sigma is not zero, and uh, you put it equal to one. Uh, you have to keep get the recursion relation in the usual way, uh, but keep sigma as a variable, and um, and then uh, you have to take the derivative of this with respect to sigma. Um, then for identical roots case. Because identical roots, anyway, we have to get you know underway to get the solution. And uh, if, if this is the case, if you don't, you're not getting two independent solution. In this case, this is the formula. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we, we are not. We have to do sigma minus sigma two times. In, in that case, it's not just the derivative because it falls in this category. So the formula, if you use the series solution, it is. Uh, the B n coefficient is first derivative of, of uh, sigma minus sigma two times a n sigma. Okay, evaluated for sigma equal to sigma two. Okay. Yeah, that was a uh, case two. So I just uh, yeah. All right. So I think uh, I will try to give you some homework problems on this uh, so that you are a little bit comfortable with it. Many of the Bessel functions, because the solution is in series form, you have to get if it is uh, you know you, you may have to use one of these methods to get the second uh, solution, right? I mean, uh, uh, so this is another way of getting it. So I think you have all the techniques. I mean, there's maybe a one more method called polynomial method, but but generally, you know, it's extension of the series method in some sense. So, but, uh, you know, these are sort of just round off that you know all the techniques uh, for solving second order differential equations. So, so the role is the first solution, which is first solution times natural log of z plus second term, which is b n z to power n. The goal is to find the type, the value of b n for a particular differential equation, right? I mean, uh, otherwise it is series. Uh, so both are, you know, in a compact form, it will be done like that. Um, so that's where it comes from. And just uh, you know the origin of where is this y n log z term coming from? It's really coming from differential of z to power sigma with respect to sigma, right? And so a log z is coming from there. I mean, right? So in that sense, that is the key thing which is giving that natural log z.
Okay, let's stop here today. Um, all right, um, I'll see what I'm going to do next time. But um, yeah, okay, so maybe I'll do stem level equations, but um, oh, you did, you guys did not pick up. Uh, okay.